Now before we get into this video, I wanted to let you guys know that a friend of mine has joined me for this collab. So after the video, make sure to go check him out. He's got a lot of good content. Trust me, make sure to listen to his parts. Let's begin. I went on the deep web before. It was probably early 2018 or 2017. I was in class. I was bored and done with all of my work on the computer. So I decided to find some creepy stuff. I was reading on a haunted doll on a sketchy website. I find a link called the deep web. The deep web is pretty similar to the dark web, but more accessible. The school didn't block it so they must have just been unaware of this website or not even know how to access it. It was just a website with a whole bunch of links that people have found on the deep web. So the first thing that I see is, how do you hide a body? I looked at the replies and found disgusting, disturbing answers. The one that made me click off of the post was, cut it up and throw it into the ocean. I was pretty scared to see something like that suggested. I had found many crime scene photos having to do with murder. There were many photos that I just wish I never saw. I found many photos of dead bodies, but these weren't like crime scene ones. I saw the person look into the camera crying. I didn't want to see the rest, but I looked down next to the person was a child. That is when I exited the site. I regretted it. I didn't want to go back, and I consider myself lucky. My friend knew some people that actually went on there, and they are still going to court for this possession of the child you know. I warn you not to go on the deep web, even though this was just a website that had some of the stuff from there. Don't do it you'll regret it. So I'm a 17 year old boy living in South Germany and Hessen to be exact. I'm a German, so I have piss poor English. I lived in a pretty loud neighborhood with some crazy stuff going on. I don't care if you believe me or not, but I know what I experienced. So one day at school, my friend, let's call him Jack for privacy reasons, told me about the dark web. Back then, I had absolutely no idea what it was. He said you can order weed and buy illegal stuff from it. I thought that that was the only thing that could be found on the deep web, but I was wrong. My friend invited me over to his place so we could check it out. But I said that we should go to my house first, and so he agreed. So after school, we did just that. Later on, after meeting up, he told me instructions on how to use the deep web, so I followed him. I downloaded the Tor browser and some free bad VPN. When we had everything, we used the search engine that we found on some random wiki called Ice Rocket, and off we went. Our journey started off with us looking for some weed on sale and some guns, and we were exploring a lot, but of course we didn't buy anything. When we accessed some random site, it was completely blank, and then the pop-ups started showing up. There were lots of links leading to some random sites. So we clicked on a random one, and one site was named something like Child Experiments. I told my friend that this was some deep shit and that we should probably leave the site, but his curiosity got the best of him. He started scrolling down, and there were some pictures of let's just say, younger people, cut up, in half, in parts, and in total. I was disgusted as fuck and told him that we needed to leave this immediately, and he didn't. I just regret shutting down the computer, plain and simple. There were some videos. One was named, Burning Child. And of course, he went to click it. What I saw next will haunt me for the rest of my life. I can't just explain what I saw. I felt heartbroken. 
This little kid was struggling and screaming against two men who held him down as the flames licked his body. He was screaming in pain and I could see his skin melting. And I was literally crying. What sicko would do this? Then all of a sudden, a chat box appeared, and a guy named Fire435 or something said, Hey, you enjoying this? We didn't know what to answer, so he, it just went on to say, Hey, I'm talking to you. Then a live video stream showed up, and it was fucking us. Us being recorded through our webcam, and I didn't know it was on. We panicked and tried shutting down our computer, but it didn't react. And all of a sudden, more messages coming up started saying, Why are you trying to leave? We're just hunting for our next victims. Me and Jack were almost in tears now. Then the sicko read our street address, names, age, and literally everything about our personal data. Jack then unplugged the computer and shut it down, and thank God. All of a sudden, Jack's mobile phone. It was a message from an unknown number. It read, I'm going to find you. Jack immediately blocked the number. So we decided to have a short discussion on what to do next. We were worried for our lives. What if this dude found us? But of course, time passed without any experiences, without anything occurring out of the usual. And we eventually forgot about the experience. Until there was a delivery for me. It didn't have a name written on it, but I was curious and went on to see what was inside. I wish I never would have opened that box. There, I found a picture of a human heart. The box was full of child's body parts. I screamed and dropped the box and immediately called the cops. They investigated and said that if they found further information that they would tell us. After that, everything went back to normal. And I've never heard about that shit again. But I'm pretty damn sure that that guy that we talked to is the one who delivered that package. Sometimes I wonder why this world is so cruel. And for everyone who hasn't been to the dark web yet, I just suggest that you stay out. Or your life will be in danger. This happened last year. I was damn curious about what was the actual deal on this dark or deep web stuff. So I went on YouTube for a tutorial, just watching to see how to access the dark web using an Android. And I planned on just surfing some of the dark web using my phone. Someone had uploaded a file for Android for the Tor browser. I didn't know what I was really up to, but I was too curious and excited. So everything was set. I downloaded all the files, and I set up everything like I was told. I covered my phone screen with tape, and then I went to my room and locked it. I opened up this Wikipedia-esque site for deep web links. Everything was cool, and I went to those normal happy chat sites. I didn't text in it, obviously. I just observed. So you see, I gained some confidence and opened up this creepy anonymous confession site. I swear you guys, my faith over humanity vanished after reading some of these confessions on there. Some people commented how they would kill their wife, mom, daughter, neighbor, whatever. Some commented on how they tried to kill someone and failed and how they regret it. Some commented on how they love to watch people suffer. And some graphic things were written over there which I honestly don't want to write on here, as I'll definitely get blocked after writing them here. Some more mentally ill people started commenting how stupid people are for loving someone and how for not doing bad stuff to them. So I had enough of all this, but I still wasn't done. I wanted to see as much as I can. So yeah, I went and opened a specific community. I'm going to keep that off up here for you guys. Had a whole bunch of chat links. It took a while to load the site. While it was loading, I thought maybe it was all fake. And maybe the site was also fake. But then, boom. 
I saw the site full of text and sick people. I can say that maybe they were ill or maybe they're just not human. I don't want to explain any of the things from there, as again, I may get blocked. The next thing I did was I went to the site. I don't remember really what the name site was, but I do remember that it was selling things made out of human skin or some organs. Damn, they were costly too. It made me almost puke everything inside of my stomach up. So I closed that site. I now went on to those sites selling guns, drugs, and many other illegal stuff. It was boring for me, so I decided to stop and I closed every freaking thing out and deleted all of the browser app. I tried to sleep, but I just couldn't. I wasn't able to sleep for the next two straight days. Everything felt horrible and ugly. But after four to five days, things went back to normal. I was using WhatsApp, texting my friends, and then I got a notification. Ding ding. Someone texted me on WhatsApp. It was an unknown number. It was an international number. I opened the text not thinking much, and I saw this creepy text. Why are you ignoring me? I got a little tensed, as I don't have a friend from abroad and maybe it was just a scam. I ignored it, and the next day, I got another text from the same number saying, you can't ignore me. I'm still here. You can't run away. I was now damn sure that things got out of hand, and I almost believed that I'm going to die. I quickly blocked the number and told my close friends about what happened about the dark web. One of my friends said the same thing also happened to him, last year after he surfed the dark web. He said that he blocked the numbers, but soon started getting these creepy deadly calls. So he changed his number and his life was good again. So now here I was, a messed up teenager. I was out of breath. I was afraid to tell anybody this, not even my mom and dad, not even saying a single fucking word, but I tried to control it by myself. The next day I got another text on WhatsApp from another unknown international number saying, why did you block me? You can't do anything now. Now it was very clear that someone just got my fucking number through hacking. I quickly blocked that number and reported it and deleted WhatsApp, deactivated all my socials too. After a week I came back and now everything was cool, but the next week I got another text from an unknown international number on WhatsApp itself. So yeah, I was not afraid enough, and I decided to not open that chat and blocked it, quickly reporting it as a spam. After that, nothing happened, and I promised and swore to God and myself that I would never ever be going back on there, even if someone offers me money for surfing the dark web. Nah, I ain't ever going on there again. My life is more important to me. I was around 16 at this time, so I was commencing a new secondary school. During my early days of attending this new educational facility, I met this rather charming guy who I will now refer to as Jacob. Even though Jacob was quite enticing, he seemed to show an unsettling amount of quirkiness. Not the kind of quirkiness that you'd see in those nerdy people who would read Marvel comic books like me, but the quirkiness that will make you think that this particular person could potentially be a serial killer. Being the pushover and overly friendly person, I put that aside and became friends with him. One Saturday afternoon, Jacob invited me to stay at his place. I didn't have anything else to do, so I accepted the invitation. Around 20 minutes later, he picked me up and took me to his place since he was able to drive. Upon arrival to his place, I took a look at the property. It was out in the bush, a big property with a main house which his parents and sisters lived along with his granny's flat around 10 meters from the main house where Jacob lives by himself. I checked my phone for the time. It was around 5 in the evening and I noticed that I had no reception. Which is strange because Telresta, the phone company that I'm with, 
normally gets really good reception and I can get at least decent signals when I'm out in the bush with my own family. I thought I was in a setting for a classic horror movie, but I humorously brushed it aside and out of my mind. Once we settled into his place and in his kitchen slash living room, he went off to have a shower. As I heard the water being turned on in his bathroom, I thought it would be a good idea to go snooping around. Nothing too privacy invading, just to look at the decor at his place and see what his room was like. In the midst of snooping, I saw various things. His old jersey, when I used to play rugby. A few artworks he did since he's an art student and a photo booth style photo of him and his ex, which I kind of got jealous of because I kind of had feelings for the guy back then. The creepy part though was his room. Upon stepping into his room at first, it does seem normal. Bed with a nightstand, desk with high-tech computer and camera, stuff like that. But as I looked around, a half-opened drawer in his nightstand caught my attention. As I looked in the drawer, I noticed something that sparked up red alarms. A big, sharp butcher knife, rope, BDSM-style handcuffs, and a bottle of something that I knew wasn't lube. I tried to brush it off as Jacob, just maybe he was being kind of hella kinky, but something in me knew that something was fishy. Maybe because of the rumors I heard at school about him doing some sort of fucked up shit. And at first I ignored them, but now I started to believe in these rumors. Shortly after discovering this, I heard the shower turn off and I sprinted my ass right back to where I was sitting before the shower began to try to see if I could get reception. He came out of the bathroom, dried and dressed. He made an amusing remark about the reception here, and as he walked up to where I was sitting and expectantly hugged me and scooped me into a bridal style, he carried me to his bedroom. These sudden actions made me have kind of a mini anxiety attack and a little bit fearful for my life. As he placed me on his bed, Jacob proceeded to go to his tripod next to his desk and prop his camera on and directly at me. This made my brain say, get the fuck out of here as my heart was pounding in fear, thinking that this was going to involve possible sexual assault or murder, and all of it to be on film for the deep web, since he told me that he visits deep web sites frequently. Luckily in this situation, I was able to be smart enough to escape and so I pretended to read a text for my mom saying that I needed to come home. I lied to him that my mom wants me to come home and said that she should pick me up. I apologized for my unforeseen leave and bid him farewell before I rushed out of his property once I got to his granny's flat. As I was about one or two streets away, I called my next door neighbor to come pick me up since I knew that my mom was out of town for the night. Once my friend picked me up, I told her that about some story as to why she was here and she should take me home. Ever since that incident, I was scared of Jacob and lessened my time in talking with him. After I graduated, I blocked him on all contacts and never talked to him again. That night was the most fearful night I've ever experienced. After that, don't go to guys' places that live on their own. Now before you leave the video, I want to say a huge thanks and a massive shout out to a good friend of mine, Horror on the Rocks. We've been talking about doing this collab for a decent amount of time now, and I've always wanted to do something with him. So just being able to actually sit down and make a video together, which there is also going to be a video on his channel, but the date has not been announced yet. So if you guys do want to go check him out, I'll make sure to put his links down in the description as well. Once again, I want to say thank you to him. He did a fantastic job and I couldn't have asked for any better. Now if you guys would like to hear more of these stories or would just like to hear us collab again, make sure to let me know down in the comment section and make sure to please go show him some love. He's very cool and he's a very chill guy to work with. So for that I want to say thank you to him and also thanks for watching I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out the links in the description as well, Twitter, Instagram, everything like that is down there including my Gmail. So if you want to submit a story, make sure to send it there. 
I would love to do some subscriber stories. And also, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment, and if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. We're doing nothing but growing. But other than that, stay safe, stay scary, and I'll see you in the next one.